we have to attend to another very important and very exciting part of today's convocation, the awarding of the honorary degree and the delivery of the convocation address. It is my pleasure to introduce today's honorary graduate, John Upside. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors and upon the recommendation of the University Senate, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, and Carlton graduates, it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce our honorary doctor recipient, John Absaim. A professor emeritus of chemistry, Dr. Absaim joined Carlton in 1962. He established a successful program in the field of synthesis and structure of nature, natural products. He has taught all levels of organic chemistry and lectured widely with research groups around the world. He served as special advisor to the Deputy Minister of the Environment, as well as Executive Director of the Canada Research Chairs, or CRC, program, and the Ontario Council of Graduate Studies as well. Professor Ab Simon has been a pillar of Carlton's administration, holding roles as the Chair of Chemistry, Dean of Graduate Studies and Research, Vice President Academic, and Vice President Research and External, first Vice President Research in the history of Carlton. Following his initial retirement, John returned to Carlton as Interim Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs before moving into several advisory roles to senior Carlton administrators. His most recent retirement took place earlier this year. I am personally grateful to John for all of his mentorship and advice over the years. Thank you, John. Madam Chancellor, in recognition of his outstanding contributions, both to organic chemistry and to the functioning and development of Carleton University, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, upon John Upside. Is that really me? <laughs> Madam Chancellor, Mr. President, faculty, colleagues, honored guests, and especially to the graduating class. Uh, an old friend of mine once got an honor degree and he asked me how he should start the, 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 the speech. And he said, I said, very simple, fellow graduates, because we're together today. I, I've been at this a bit longer than you. Um, but I am deeply honored by this bestowal today. I, uh, after nearly 60 years around Carlton, I graduated last. I guess I don't earn any fees or fines, so I'm graduating with you. 25,000 days ago, plus or minus a couple of hundred, I was sitting down in a room like this uh, for sort of similar ceremony. I was waiting for the event to get rolling, and on the stage were a number of people, all in fancy dress. Uh, this was 60 years ago, so they were almost all men. And on the stage, there was a senior academic who stood up and gave us a talk. I've forgotten what the talk was about completely. I know he was a professor of physics, and he got a Nobel Prize later. Uh, I'm waiting for mine still. But I do remember that we were sitting down uncomfortably waiting because we wanted to get on with the show. And I promise that I will keep to, I, I was told earlier, only four minutes, but I'm sorry, it'll only, it'll only be 45. <laughs> so I grew up in Liverpool in the UK. And I grew up in Liverpool and North Wales during the Second World War. 
I graduated from high school in 1953. That's before most people in this room were born, I guess. And that year was a special year. It was the year of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. I had the privilege of attending that, that event as an air cadet. They didn't put me in a carriage. Uh, but that year was a special year. It was the year of the announcement of the double helix. It was the year the Rolling Stones started their career. It was also the year that, uh, that Everest was climbed for the first time and the first under four minute mile was, was run. And of course, I started at the university. So it was, a, it was a special year, a vintage year. I started my postgraduate work in 1956 at the same institution. We skipped the masters at that time. And I was also involved in aviation. I was, uh, had been an air cadet and I was really interested in, in flying. And at that time, there were some schemes at universities, and they, I think they exist in some form today, where they try to persuade graduates, especially science graduates, that maybe they would like to have a career in the Royal Air Force, British Royal Air Force. So I was able to actually fix a scheme, I was a fixer, whereby I was trained as a pilot and was able to follow my PhD. So here came my first choice, my first career choice, to fly as a career or go into laboratory. I chose the latter, the least attractive, especially at that time. And why did I do that? Well, you know, it was a difficult choice. But you have to make choices. And I, after my PhD, I, came, I emigrated to Canada for a postdoctoral fellowship at the National Research Council, and then came here in 1962, a long time ago. So I made a choice, but I have a choice. I've loved every moment that I've been at Carlton. It's a great institution. And I encourage you, the graduates today, that when you face choices in the future, and I hope there are many, especially for you, know, for you to go to, go for the one you feel strongest about, not the one that's, uh, what to say, more glamorous or has status. And you keep those options fluid, and you'll have a great life. But don't think you have to work into your 80s, like me. In my time at Carlton, I've been to many, many convocations. And over 100. And uh, I enjoy it. My wife wonders why I like it so much. And in fact, it always excites me. Because this is what a university is about, is, is the graduates who are going forward in a new career. Now, needless to say, on convocations, I've listened to many, many convocation addresses. And they're all pretty similar. You know, the message is, follow your dreams, explore your intellectual passions, change the world, save the planet, overcome challenges and adversity, and so on. So I'm not going to add any more of those, because you must have thought of these yourself and figured them out. But I did find one convocation address amusing and attractive, and that was in 2014, and Admiral McCready, getting an honor degree at the University of Texas in Austin, started his convocation address with the words, did you make your bed this morning? I hope you did. Now, that seems quite a simple a statement for a convocation address. But in fact, his point was, if you can do something simple to start the day off or your career off, at least it's completed, and, it, and, and, and this will set the tone for many other big completions uh, around, around your career. Now, you're a very special cohort. 
You know, you've completed a course of study in an area that's largely, for most of you, could be largely experimental, and yet most of you have not had the extensive opportunity of working in a laboratory. To take full opposition, you needed to take full opportunity, full, full advantage of these opportunities. So, you are, you're very special, but in fact, you're going to graduate, you're actually real scientists because you've taken part in a, an experimental, an experiment, and that is a pedagogical experiment of, mix, of mix, mix, mixed methods of education. Now, I have two requests to you as, I go, as you go forward. First, remember the great experiences that you've had at Carlton and those you chose very well. Reflect on your time, both virtual and real, and in person at this great institution. And please don't lose touch. And please remember, a university gets better by degrees. Now, the second and most important fact is please remember that you are now qualified scientists. Take time and make an effort to protect and defend scientific thinking and discourse. And wherever possible, do this shamelessly. Worldwide, we're seeing an anti-science undercurrent, even a fear of science. Some people have called this actually a, a diet of deceit. At times of critical societal change, this seems to well up. We see more and more of this. For example, we see strong and largely unfounded attacks on synthetic biology, climate change, artificial intelligence, and so on and so forth. You see it all the time. And of course, the ever-increasing misinformation activities too. So please defend science. There's a broad ignorance of the scientific method. Science is not perfect. It doesn't always have to be right or the, just the best answers. But at its best, scientific research is rigorous and self rigorous, self-examinatory, and of course requires reproducibility to demonstrate veracity. Maybe we need a clearer message in voicing the importance and possibilities of science to the world. As you know, new technologies appear daily, techniques appear daily. Take some time to explore the great multidisciplinary opportunities that you will have. You'll encounter during your lifetime different boundaries. Don't be afraid to cross those boundaries. Scientists are needed to, uh, for example, in policy determination, definition, ethics, and even broader apart. As I mentioned, there's a continuing need for clear and accurate communication of science. So with this in mind, enjoy your chosen path. Laugh often. May your journey as scientists be rewarding varied and never boring. Remember, you are now ambassadors for both Carlton and for science. Make your bed tomorrow. Thank you very much.